Advice for DMs. Concealed in an update video about Lenny the Big Gay Orc. Never let a player who has acting experience and an acting degree um, play a non roleplay heavy class. So no fighters, uh, no monks, and probably no fighter class. Barbarian, sorry. Because they will turn it into a roleplay heavy class and you won't know how to cope. It was fantastic. Roleplay now, his exile from the tribe. Basically, uh, the reason I gave uh, was that the new chief came in, and although Lenny was a bit confusing to some of the older orcs, he was still a very good blacksmith and was very much liked in the community. But new chief comes in, he's cracking down on weakness, and that starts with Lenny who is being exiled with his family sword into the wider world. It was absolutely heartbreaking. It was beautiful. He, he like acted out that he was crying, got so in character. He was voicing the character so well. It, it went on much longer than I expected, this conversation he was having with these two orc guards. But oh my god, I just wanted to give him a hug afterwards. It was amazing. And then it goes from there, and just occasionally on his climb up, he's going from big gruff orc voice to, oh, little girl voice, oh. And it, he can do a much better voice than I can. And something I love about this character is he was he really wanted to play it. And he really wanted to play it right. Um, but he didn't want to be disrespectful, because obviously he knows I do these update videos, but at the same time, he doesn't want to be disrespectful at the table at all. He, he likes being very inclusive in all forms of his life. So he checked with our other two players um, from the Dragon Age campaign, who are a lovely couple, um, playing Zed and Narlok. And when he told them about Lenny the Big Gay Orc, they were... They were overjoyed, they were happy, they were laughing, they, they, they thought the idea was fantastic, they thought it was fun, and they thought that if anyone could pull off that character, it was this role player. Um, the guy playing Roboto in the other session. <laughs> and he can, he is a very good actor, and oh my god, he can do such a good camp voice. It is fantastic. When a straight man can out-camp a gay man, now that is impressive. Anyway... Um, so the session is fairly simple, it's a, it, he's playing Barbarian, I decided to give him basically a smacking run from start point A to end point B. So he fights some troglodytes, kills them, fights some troglodytes, kills them, nearly gets killed himself, uh, because he hasn't yet, uh, basically the idea of this was a kind of crash course for everyone who's not played these classes. Um, he's never played Barbarian before, so he didn't really understand how raging works. Um, so I had to really put him in a situation where he had to rage, and obviously once he started raging, he was using it a lot. Which, as a Barbarian, that's what you're meant to do. You rage. You rage and you smack things. Quite simple. Um, so he gets to a little village and finds a tavern. And he rolls really high on perception initially, and sees a few different things going on. Um, but when he tries to listen into a conversation between a drow woman um, in a very attractive dress and a uh, dwarf with some kind of metallic staff, he failed on his perception check to listen into their conversation. He was able to hear the tones of their voices, but not any actual words. Um, and he failed on a history check. Um, so he didn't know anything about the metal staff. Eventually he settles on going and talking to the old homeless man who sat drinking, by, uh, just trying to warm himself by the fire. Um, the old man informs him that he was, he's a traveller, um, going across the islands. He'd had an armed escort that had to abandon him here. He'd been here a few weeks trying to, um, get from here to Elom. Uh, which is the main, which is the starting city for the party. So I need to get everyone there. Which, fine with me. Getting everyone to one city is quite easy when you know what you're doing. Uh, well, when you only give them so many routes to choose. <laughs> um, anyway, Lenny is a nice-hearted person at his core, so he agrees to take the old man. 
Um, the old man can offer no money. And Lenny has been so nice to him because he's also bought him a drink and breakfast and dinner and a bed that he does give him a ring. Uh, using metallurgy, uh, because he's a blacksmith, I gave him uh, bonuses to insight on metal. He knows that the ring is made of pure platinum. That said, he doesn't recognize the symbol on the uh, on the ring. Uh, it's a shield emblazoned with a dragon's head. Now, anyone who's a fan of Dungeons and Dragons of a certain aspect will know what that means. If you don't, it will be explained by the end of this video. Don't worry. Um, I just don't want to spoil it yet because I didn't spoil it for him. So he travels down with this old man by the name of Hamnet. And they're sharing stories. He, the old man's telling stories um, from his time traveling. And they reach another point where Lenny and Hamnet hear um, the same voice of the drow woman from last night. And Lenny, being the heroic type, goes to save her. At which point he is in ambushed by four Kenkus. Oh my god, I rolled awfully. He hit every time. I didn't hit once. I mean, the man's AC is 18. No, sorry, 20. Because, hey, he's a, he's a half-orc um, barbarian. He's, he's got an insane armor class. But there we go. He kills the four Kenku quite easily, loots their corpses, goes back to... Oh, that was also the point where he first raged, because he needed to reduce the damage he was taking. Because, of course you do. Um... Once he started raging, he just didn't want to stop. He was having so much fun dealing that much damage and being that likely to hit. So it continues. He meets back up with Hamlet, they carry down the road, and then they come across a knoll and its hyenas. And they are surrounding something on the floor. At which point, um, go into the attack. Lenny does have a crossbow, so he uses the crossbow first, bang, uh, gets a hyena between the eyes. Puts the crossbow away, draws sword, waits for them to get to him. Second, they're on him. Rage. Bang, bang, bang. All the hyenas drop. Um, save one. And there is the Null Hunter shooting longbow. He's shooting his longbow at him. Um, using a rage action, he, on the last turn of his rage, um, he kills the hyena and rushes the uh, null. I explained to him you're not going to get to it this turn, you might just get to it next turn depending on what happens. Um, did morale checks, did all that. Null stood its ground, tried to fight him with a spear, a couple of turns back and forth and null dead. So, fairly fairly exciting fight, at which point Lenny looks around for Hamnet and can't find him, but Hamnet is stood over the woman that the Null had found, or had attacked. Basically, there is a woman in the middle of the road um, that the Nulls were surrounding. And Hamnet says she'll be okay, but you need to get her somewhere safe. I recommend you go see Jimmy at the Leaping Dwarf. In that moment, Hamnet turned from... Cause as I said, this is the Dragonlance series, lots of dragons, and seeing as Arihiri got Tiamat, I decided to give Lenny Bahamut. Yeah, the god of metallic dragons. Again, some people might argue me using what is effectively gods in the dragon, uh, in the Dungeons and Dragons universe, but with Tiamat and Bahamut, they are very active in those canons, and especially on Dragonlance, where dragons are just everywhere. You walk outside and there are dragons flying overhead. It, it, it's like how to train your dragon. It's like Berg. So, Bahamut says the, uh, the wariness of being a hero, um, says a few more archaic and old man things, um, and then flies off. After advising Lenny, go find someone called Jimmy at the Leaping Dwarf in Elom. You'll remember Jimmy from Tiamat, uh, no it wasn't Tiamat, I think it was Claude that told um, Arahiri to go find Jimmy. 
Um, and looking down, he rolls a m critical failure on his um, perception. So here is a demon in the middle of the road. I, I, I say the critical fail only lasts a couple seconds, then he realizes that it's a tiefling. And that is where uh, my sister-in-law's character will be coming in, the tiefling sorceress. So, that's the end of that update. Um, please like and subscribe, and see you next time. Bye.